Okay, so I'm going to test something else. So we're going to go into Macro, um, sorry, Zachariah 13 sick. And uh, we're going to go to this guy who calls himself Ask Dr. Brown. And it's talking about a Zacharias 13 6. It's saying, Is it a messianic prophecy? And um, of course, um, you're going to see what he's going to say, and then we're going to go and test and see what it actually means. It was having an argument with a Christian, and he said this quote that was in the Bible. He used it against uh, Jesus, I guess, to say that Jesus wasn't the Messiah. And I was just hoping you could clear it up for me. You bet. And, uh, I can tell you the quote. Yeah. So he's saying he was saying that Jesus wasn't the Messiah, and he's going to base it on Zechariah 16, 13, 6. So we're okay. going to go down to it. Um, so the quote was Zechariah uh, chapter 13, 6, and it says, uh, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thy hands? Then he shall answer, Those which, uh, with, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Okay. And one shall say unto him, What are those wounds in thine hands? And then he shall say, and those which I was wounded in the house of my friends. So in the house of my friends. First of all, I want you to, let's go look at the house. You know, the, the Bible describes the body as a house, right? Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, you shall not see me until until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So he's talking about the house. He's talking about like the temple, the body, blah, blah, blah. You know, the Bible describes the house as like a temper, tabernacle, tent, um, things of that nature. So um, house just means, quote, unquote, your body. In fact, um, I'm going to give you another example of what it means. house tabernacle all darkness shall be hid in his secret place a fire not blown shall consume him it shall go ill with him that is left in his what tabernacle right so it's, 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 the bible's looking at it like man his body is a house and there's two basically there's only really two houses there's the first adam which is of corrupt seed of corrupt you know flesh all flesh had corrupted itself upon the earth and there's the second Adam, which is a quickening spirit, and that's a spiritual house. And I'll explain. Let me show you this. Uh, spiritual stones. Again, the Bible acts as if there's really only truly two houses. The first house, Adam, who sinned, corrupted himself and all flesh upon the earth. That's why it says in Adam all die, and it says in Christ are all made alive, right? He also, as lively stones, are built up a what? Spiritual house. And notice it says ye. So it's like plural as lively stones because there's many members in a household. And just like it says, it's, uh, there's many members, one body. You all been baptized by one spirit into one body. But it says the children of the flesh are not the children of God. They in the flesh can't please God. So it's explaining it as if there's only two houses. And the, the house that God is talking about, the eternal house, is a spiritual house. So ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up what? Spiritual, which is just saying living sacrifices, not dead sacrifices, sick, lame, halt, all those kind of stuff that it talks about in, um, uh, I think, Malachi. It says, um, acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So we can see what is... It's talking about when it's talking about house, house, tabernacle, tent, you know, those types of things, you know, body. It's all describing it as a house. So ye also as a spiritual house. So that's why it says they that are in the flesh can't please God. Now, going back to Zechariah 13, 6, we're going to listen to this guy, Dr. Brown, explain it. Because, again, I try to explain to you guys. That the Bible says there's one God and one mediator between God and man. And the Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And there's the man, Jesus Christ, who's not God. The man, Jesus Christ, is not God. He's the mediator. That was, cursed is any man, cursed is anyone that, ha that hangeth on a tree. Listen, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Right? Ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So when they, when they crucified Christ, they crucified the man 
Christ Jesus. They didn't crucify the spirit. Right? They didn't kill God. It says that you're not even in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling you. Now, well, the spirit of God, this it says the spirit of God is the spirit of Christ. It's saying, if so, be the spirit of God dwelling you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ. So it's telling you these are synonymous. Spirit of God and spirit of Christ are the same thing. And it's saying, you're not, if you have the spirit of Christ, you're not in the flesh. Well, the man, Jesus, had the spirit of Christ. And that's why it says there's... Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Now, how else, how else could we prove this, guys? Because if we go here, all we have to do is do this. We can go here. It says... Look at this. Now unto the king eternal, listen, immortal, here you go, invisible. King, who's the king of kings? Lord of lords, guys, that's Jesus, right? Well, how can it say he's the king of kings? He's eternal, immortal. We know that the body that he came in is a mortal body, right? And it's saying that mortal body is the one that you can see. That's the one that's made of, made of a woman, made under the law. Look, it says made of a woman, made under the law. Well, God is not made. God is not made. God's not a creature, right? The flesh of Mary is a creature that came from Adam and Eve, that came from the dust of the earth, which was created, right? So now into the king, eternal, immortal, invisible. Immortal means it can't die, guys, right? Invisible. Well, people, could, people saw Jesus, which explains why he was saying to Philip, hast thou not been with me so long? Philip and, and has not known me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Well, Philip is looking right at him. So why is he saying, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? He's saying, if you see me by faith, not looking at the outward appearance. And then he talks about, you know, um, we, we see things by faith, the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. It says the only wise God. So guys, you, you don't have two gods. It says here that the only wise God is eternal, immortal, invisible no question what it says here right the only wise god is immortal invisible and eternal the only wise god is invisible so it's not that jesus isn't god it's just that jesus is god only by spirit and that's why it says god is a spirit it tells you just plainly outright god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth it says they that are in the flesh can't please god okay so we have this it's pretty clear what it means for there is one god to the only wise god eternally mortal and invisible right and it says there's one media between god and man the man christ jesus now the man christ jesus again made of a woman made under the law made to be sin right so curses anyone that hangeth on a tree that's the man Christ Jesus. And that's the house that quote, unquote, made, right? That's the house of the flesh. And so when he says here, and one shall say unto him, what are those wounds in thine hands? Then shall he answer those with which I was wounded, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. He's talking about the children of this world. That's the house that was wounded the house of my friends. That's the first, that's the outward man. And listen, here's, here's how you say, well, how do you, how can you say that? Um, here, here's how you know. Again, it says they that are in the flesh can't please God, but it says if the spirit of Christ is in you, you're not in the flesh. Well, that's, that's to go for the man Jesus too, right? Listen to this. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, you know how it says the friendship with the world is at to, to be to be friends with the world is to be at enmity with God, right? If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Well, look, he says, wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Look, if you know no man after the flesh, what? Well, listen, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, listen, it says we knew him after the flesh. Oh, that that's when he was a 
in the house of the friend of my friends because those he said um handle me and see that it is I myself a spirit hath not what flesh and bone as you see remember as you see me have well we this says to the king eternally mortal invisible the only wise god well if invisible means you can't see but when the man Christ Jesus was quickened that mortal body was quickened he says handle me and see that it is I myself, a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. So he's saying, I was wounded in the house of my friend. That's the, the house that was from the made of made of woman, made from the dust of the earth. So wherefore hence, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh. Listen, yet now, listen, henceforth know we him no more. How can it say we, we have known Christ after the flesh? Yet now henceforth know we him no more. Why would it say that? Because when you die to the old man, die, die to the flesh, you're no longer a child of the flesh. You're a child of God. And it says the children of the flesh, these are not children of God. You belong to what? The father of spirits. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth because you're a new creature created in Christ. In fact, when you click on this and open it, that's why it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, because it's talking about now about the spirit of Christ. And this is exactly what the Bible just says. If any man be in Christ, there's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the what? Flesh. Oh, no, we no man after the flesh. Yo, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. We don't know the shepherd after the flesh. We know the shepherd after the what? Spirit. As many as are led by the spirit. Who's our shepherd? Jesus. So he says, those who, he says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Yeah, all men will be drawn to death. All men are going to perish. All flesh will perish and go back to the dust. But he's saying of the sheep, those who hear his voice, he says, they, I give unto them eternal life. They fall into regeneration, washing, renewing of the Holy Ghost. Those are the ones who will never perish, right? Given that children of the flesh aren't children of God and all flesh will perish. So he's saying, no longer is he in the house of the flesh. Say so we knew him in the house of the flesh before, before we were regenerated and born again. But yet, after we were born again, we know we don't even know we know no man after the flesh, including the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Hence saying, therefore, if any man be in Christ, there's no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He is a new creature. Listen, old things are passed away. We don't know him after the house of the flesh anymore. Behold, all things are become new. Right? You sow into the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Each produces after its kind. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And that's what it's saying, guys. And so people say this is tricky, but it's actually not tricky. Because it's explaining that the flesh of Mary is not God. It's explaining that the flesh, God is a spirit and God's not flesh. God comes in the likeness of sinful flesh, but God is not flesh. Because the Bible says it's God that worketh in you, right? So it's God that worketh in you. So should people look at your outward man? No, they, they shouldn't. They should, they, you should say, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. That's what Paul says, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. That's why we're called the what? We're called the body of Christ. But we're the body of Christ after the spirit, not after the flesh. Before, you can say, I've been crucified with Christ, Right? I died to the flesh. I've been crucified with Christ, right? We knew him after the flesh. Nevertheless, I live, right? Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of Christ, which is the spirit of life, dwelleth. Um, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Meaning if you're of, if you're of the flesh, you're none of his. If you're not regenerated, born again, you're none of his. If you're not converted, you're not a child of God. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. It's, I mean, it's so clear, guys, what the Bible is saying. It says, we know no man after the flesh. Yo, we have known Christ after the flesh. Yet, once you're born again, we don't know him anymore after the flesh. Why? Because when you're born again, you're a new creature created in Christ. Old things, the old man, the first birth, right? Right, Nicodemus? Can a man enter again into his mother's womb? <laughs> you know, Nicodemus talking about thinking about the carnal birth and Jesus had to correct him. 
that is born of flesh is flesh, that is born of spirit is spirit, right? So um, it says, old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. So the Bible is just playing, we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. That's what the scriptures are, are saying, right? So it's saying, you're no longer of that household that was after the what? After the flesh, which is what I showed you. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Um, house. Did it say spirit? I don't know if it says this in the Bible. I don't think, I don't, don't think it does. I didn't see if it says here. Yeah, here it is. Ye also as lively stones are built up in what? Spiritual house. So the, the house that was wounded was in the flesh. Handle me and see that it is I. Remember he, the hands felt the hand, felt the, 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 the holes in his hands and, and, and the side where he was pierced. He says, those which were, uh, those wounds that I have in thy hands, he says, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friend, right? He's talking about in this world, right? But he's saying, I'm not of this world, right? The, the flesh that came from Mary is of this world. It came from the dust of the earth, but God is a spirit. And it says, look, you got to be born from where? The word of God, right? The light came into the world and the darkness comprehended it not. I'm not of this world. Year of this world. I am not of this world. Ye, I am from above. Year from beneath. Year of this world. I am not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. So the reason why this guy, <clears throat> the reason why he's lying about it is because he, he associates it. He thinks he's a Jew according to the flesh. And so he's got to, he's got to say, well, no, nah, this isn't talking about the flesh. Because he's based this this verse is just showing that all the glory goes to God, who's the Spirit. Yes, the man Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, but that doesn't give everybody eternal life. That means he paid the legal sin debt, right, with his blood. Okay, so he paid the legal sin debt for everyone. So you don't you, you don't have to keep the law, but the law would have required that you be put to death. So he died for your sins. And now that he died for your sins, paid the legal sin debt, there's only one thing left for you to do is to believe, right? What must I do to say? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And faith isn't of the law. So it's saying that when, after you heard and believe the gospel of your salvation, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So it's basically saying when you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, you're a new creature created in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hence, the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. God's called the father of spirits. And you're in a spiritual household, not a what? Carnal household, not a tabernacle made with hands, right? That's what it's explaining, guys. So it says, look, I was wounded in the house of my friends. Then it says this, look, awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow. It's saying, go against, destroy the house of the flesh. That's what, that's what it's saying. It's saying, destroy the words of men. All those children of the flesh, they will be destroyed. All flesh will perish and go back to the dust, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, right? He's talking about, again, Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Everybody's going to follow after the flesh, right? Think about it. Um, Judas followed after the flesh, right? Wasn't, Ju wasn't Judas a disciple? Right. But Judah, Judas followed after the flesh. Because all flesh will perish and go back to the dust. So everybody's going to, but no, is everybody going to be raised a new creature created in Christ? Of course not. Only those who believe are new creatures created in Christ who are born again from Jerusalem above as free as mother of us all. The spiritual children, right? So, and the sheep shall be scattered, right? He's saying the sheep shall be scattered and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. Because it's saying, that the, it says, um, the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These two are contrary one to the other. And the house divided against itself cannot stand, right? So you can't have it both ways, guys. That's why I was explaining you're not in the flesh but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwelling. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Because it's explaining that because the spirit of Christ is in Jesus, it wasn't ever the glory. The glory wasn't in the flesh. Then it says no flesh or glory before him. So he's saying, look, you got to understand that God's the spirit. And, you know, they that in the flesh can't please God. And he's saying he's going to destroy the works of the flesh. And in fact, not only that, it says it, guys. <laughs> he's like, look. I think it says. Let's see if I can find this. I 
and this, this is how it works. Let's just do this here. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, right? The works of the flesh are manifest. You can see them. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness. Listen, these are the works of the flesh. These are, these are the house of his friends. Idolatry, witchcraft. That's why it says friendship with the world is in, enmity, enmity against God, right? Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, right? Envy, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such the like, of which I tell you, as I have told you in time past, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Hence, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But listen, but the fruit of the spirit, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and truth, right? Call the Father spirits and tell you children of the flesh aren't children of God, right? Peaceful, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, faithful, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Jesus was what? Made under the law, paid our legal sin debt. Listen, and they that are crucified, they that are Christ have crucified what? The flesh. He crucified the house of his friends and, and flesh with the affections and lusts. Listen, if we live in the spirit, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwelling. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not in it. Let us also walk in the spirit, right? So that's what it's talking about, guys. And of course, because uh, these guys want to claim that they're a chosen people, a so-called chosen race, of course they don't want, because they want to think, they're saying, I thank God I'm not like other men. And they're trying to use God as an excuse and say, well, God has picked us, you know, to to rule the world as a chosen race above all races that dwell upon the face of the earth. No, that's because they're lying about the prophecy and they've been fed a bunch of lies and they really do think that, you know, oh, we've been brought back into the so-called Middle East because God has got, this is where God, God is doing this and it's a blessing to us. And it's like, God's like, no, that's not a, that's not the, that's not a blessing, but it's true. You are in the land you're, you're in the land of darkness in the Middle East that was brought about with, with lies and warfare, physical warfare. It's not, it's not some miracle. How is it a miracle that, that uh, you guys are having some carnal war to get into the, <laughs> into the land? So, but people who want to believe that lie, they think, well, we're a chosen race because they're like, we be Abraham's seed. But the seed of Abraham, there's two seeds, guys. There's the corrupt seed and there's the incorruptible seed. And the Bible just tells you. The Bible tells you just plain, just as plain as you can see. It says, look, here's what, here's what you know. For he that sowed into his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sowed into the spirit, God the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, shall of the spirit reap what? Life everlasting. Flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. All flesh will perish and go back to the dust. God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. We are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. Okay? So this is what it's saying. It's basically saying, look, it's not the flesh and blood. Because it says in the thing, it says, he that cometh like flesh and blood. And the thing is, um, I'm sorry. Oh, water and blood. It calls it calls it water and blood. Water and blood, and then it says spirit. I'm sorry, my bad. Here we go. Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, it, it talks about it here. It says, "Look, that is he that came by water and blood, flesh and blood, even Jesus Christ." Right. So this is the man, the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Remember, they pierced his side, and out came what? Water and blood. When they pierced his side, right? Not by water only, but by water and blood, flesh and blood. But look at what it says. And it is the spirit that beareth witness. Listen. He that sowed into the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Right? It is the spirit that beareth witness because what? The spirit is truth. It's not giving any credit to the flesh of man. Right? It's not giving any credit. It's saying, it's saying the flesh of man is corrupt. That's what it's saying. It's not giving any credit to the, to, to the flesh of man. It's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is true. And so that's why it says, I will turn my up on the little ones. And it came to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts shall be cut off and die. But the third part shall be left therein. What part's going to be left therein? 
Well, the water and the blood will be cut off. But the third part is the spirit, right? The spirit. It's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life. The flesh profiteth nothing. It's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life. The flesh profiteth nothing. Stephen, when he was stoned, called upon God, said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. It says, saving some with fear. Here we go. Here go right here. Letting you know, guys, flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. That's the part. That's the part that's going to be cut off. Look. And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the what? The flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. So the, the third part that'll go through is what? The spirit, right? Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And then you, you can go to Stephen Stone, you know, flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. It says Stephen, when he was stone, called upon God saying, Lord Jesus, receive my what? Spirit, right? And then if you can go to the Old Testament, go to the Old Testament, let me see. Then shall the dust, you know, man was formed from the dust, the flesh, right? Then the dust, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, right? And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it, right? He's saying that you got to be born that was born of flesh is flesh. That was born of spirit is spirit. You sow into the flesh, shall the flesh reap corruption. You show into the spirit of the spirit, shall you reap life everlasting. Stephen, when he called, Stephen called upon God saying, Lord Jesus, what? Receive my spirit, saving some with fear, hating even the, saving some with fear, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Stephen called upon God saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, shall return unto God who gave it. Okay. God's called the father of spirits. Here you go, Father of the Spirit. Look. Furthermore, we've had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection instead of being subject to death, right? The cross, instead of being subject to death, right? The subjects of God don't perish. My sheep, I give it to the eternal life, they shall never perish. Unto the Father of what? Each produces after his kind, Father of spirits, and live. Okay, so that's why it says it shall come to pass that in the land, said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Well, that's talking about flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But the third part should be left. And listen, look, I will bring the third part through the fire, saving some with fear, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. I will bring a third part. Stephen, when he was stoned, called upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And will refine them as silver is refined. And will try them as gold is tried. Because God said he tries the hearts of men. And he says he's looking for faith. From faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. Right? They shall call upon my name. Right? Right? And I will hear them. My sheep hear my voice. <laughs> they, my sheep, they hear my voice. They believe I give it to them eternal life. They shall never perish. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. It is clear because God is saying he's called the what? Let's go back. The father of spirits and spirits don't have flesh and bones. So the reason why you're getting uh, the reason why you're getting this guy who's lying is because he wants to claim that he's of the chosen race. And this whole thing about the chosen race lie is nothing but colonization repackaged, guys. It's repackaged. That's why they're trying to reverence, quote unquote, reverence Mary and all this kind of stuff. That's why these three hat Abrahamic lies of the faith. Think about it. These different religions, they have what? Carnal wars. All their wars are for treasures in this world, guys. They love the world. And what does the Bible say? What did the Bible say about the world, guys? Let me show you something. <laughs> Look, what does this mean? Listen to this. This is, if you want to, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, <laughs> for them which thou hast given me. Oh, those are born from Jerusalem above, which free as mother of us all. Look, children of the flesh, child, children of God. Listen to this. Look. 
What? What? If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. We weren't born from the dust of this earth. We were born from Jerusalem above, as free as mother of all. God's called the father of spirits. Right? And the children of the flesh aren't children of God. But I have chosen you out of the world because we were born from heaven. Right? We're strangers and pilgrims in this world. We're here just for a short season. And we're telling people to believe. Therefore, the world hateth us. Right? <laughs> That's what it's talking about, guys. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Well, that's not what the three Abrahamic faiths are doing. The three Abrahamic faiths, the so-called, the, the hat tricks, the Trinity hat tricks, they're fighting for this world. They're trying to convince you with their fake prophecy tensions that's being coordinated. They're trying to convince you, oh, you look over there in the, in the Middle East, it's prophecy. Look, the Lord Jesus done brought them back. Well, actually, they said they went back into the land without the Messiah. Jesus is like, unless a man be born again, he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. They're like, we'll fix that. In 1948, 6 million. You know, that, that's what they're, this is what these guys are saying. You know, they're, they're just making up. They're just lying. They're faking and falsifying Bible prophecy. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. Let me show you something else. Listen, listen, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Listen, when you were without Christ, you were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Guys, how does this work? <laughs> how? It says if you don't have, look, it says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's saying, if you don't have the spirit of Christ, unless a man be born again, he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, if you don't have the spirit of Christ, meaning you're not born again or converted, you're aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. You got to be born again, Nicodemus. You got to be born into to Jerusalem above as free as mother of us all. But these guys just said, Okay, we'll just make one down here. It'll be the false one. And God already accounted for them making a false one. And that's why he says my kingdom is not of this world. And so it says at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers, listen, from the covenant of the promise. And he says, look, you were strangers from the covenant of the promise because look, back when you were children of the flesh, you were under the law. But then when you believe the gospel, you died to, you died to the law. You died to this world and you were born by the promise of eternal life that God gives you freely by grace through faith. And it says now, after you heard and believe the gospel, you're still with the Holy Spirit of what? Promise. Right? And he says, he says, at the time that you were aliens, you were having no hope and you were without God. Listen, my kingdom's not of this world, in the world. So when you're in the world, when you're in the world without God, you were oh, you were without God in the world. He said, at that time, you were without Christ and you were aliens to the commonwealth and you were strangers to the covenant of promise. So he's saying, anybody who's not born again, who's a child of the flesh, who's of this world, they're without God and they're in this world. And that's why it says, God, That's why it says, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're not of the world, right? In Christ Jesus. Where are we at? Heavenly places. Amazing, huh? It's amazing, right? So that's why it says I'll bring a third part through the fire. Because it's letting us know that, look, you know, <laughs> unlike the, the fake the fake 1948. We, we, we know that's fake. We know it's phony. We know it's not eternal because we keep seeing it getting destroyed and we see maintenance trucks and we see plumbing services and graveyards and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So they got to have that and they got all kinds of pests over there. <laughs> so they're like the fruit is withering and it falls from the tree and there's people dying there in the so-called holy city. And so, you know, it's all fake, right? It was now they desire a better country that is in what? and heavenly remember the commonwealth 
of Israel? It says when you were strangers without God in the world, when you knew not Christ. Well, it says, but now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Well, wait a minute. It says the country is in heaven. Where is the city? This is the reason why um, this is why this guy doesn't like it, because it's exposing the idea of a chosen race being fake. And so he's like, well, we can't we can't show that God is rejecting the flesh of Jesus because if we show that God's reflecting the, the, the flesh of Jesus, that's problematic. Right. Because that would mean that. When the Bible says he was made to be sin, it actually says, no, that's talking about the flesh of all men. And so that's why the Bible says the Jew is not one who is one outwardly, but inwardly and circumcision is that by the heart and the spirit. We are the circumcision which worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. Flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. They and their flesh can't please God. That's problematic for people who claim to be a chosen race, right? <laughs> you're saying you're the apple of God's eye and it says they and their flesh can't please God. That's highly problematic. And then it says, look, you know, no man after the flesh, though we've known Christ as the flesh. Now, henceforth, know him no more. Right. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. Stephen, when he was stoned, called upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, what? Receive my spirit. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the what? Mother of us all. So the better country is in heaven. And then <laughs> Jerusalem is in heaven, too. But we are children of the kingdom. So we're down here. And people only see our outward appearance, which is the flesh, but they don't know we're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, because we have the spirit of God to dwell up in us. But if any man have not the spirit of Christ, which is the spirit of God, which is in us, they're none of his because they're children of the what? Of the flesh. And the children of the flesh are not the children of God. God can tell you over and over again, and people are just going to try to look, let's glorify the flesh of Jesus. Well, look at the cross. There's a crown of thorns. It's had the sign above his head. And it's telling you, it says, curses anyone, any, anyone that hangeth on a tree said he was made a curse. Do you think God is cursed? No, it's talking about the flesh of Mary made from the dust of the earth. So that's why it says it shall go ill with him that's left in his tabernacle. It's talking about the flesh. It'll go ill with people who are left in that house made with hands. All darkness shall be hidden in secret places. Talking about his heart, a fire not blown because people, you know, the fire not blown because people, you know, they burn for the treasures of this world. It says, uh, excuse me, love not the world nor the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Store not for yourselves treasures on earth where thieves break in and moth to corrupt. It talks about store for yourselves treasures in heaven. And it says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Well, these guys, these three Abrahamic faiths, their hearts in the Middle East, their hearts in the Middle East, their hearts to, to conquer the world. They're, they're doing this little play, this little fake prophecy and they got all their little minions all around going to these higher institutions of heresy for the three false Abrahamic faiths, teaching you these lies that, oh, this prophecy is being fulfilled in the Middle East and blah, 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 blah. And it's all a lie because the thief in the cross just believed God. And he said, today thou would be me in paradise, right? Well, you know, they still buried his flesh, right? They still buried his flesh. And so what do you mean today thou would be me in paradise? Oh, that's right. Flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. He was born a new creature. He was born in paradise. He was born in heaven, right? Not in the earth, right? So it says, um, a fire not blown shall consume him because it's talking about people whose hearts lust and they deny the gospel because of the, you know, the pride of life. And they see the things of the world and they're like, I don't want to, I don't have faith because I can't see it. I can't, how is that going to help me in this life? So they, they use, they try to make a religion that just gives them more worldly gain. And they just pervert the word of God for worldly gain, right? It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. So when it says it shall go ill with him that's left in his tabernacle, well, look at this, guys. Remember how it says, we know no man after the flesh, though we know Christ after the flesh. Now, henceforth, know we him no more. Well, we don't know him after the flesh, but we know him after the spirit. And that's why it says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not a his, right? Um, what was I saying? Oh, put it on tab. Okay, let's do this. 
So we see this, it shall go ill with him that slept in his tabernacle. Look at this, guys. And knowing that I, that surely I must put off this tabernacle. Listen, I must put off this tabernacle even as our Lord Christ had shown me, had showed me. It's talking about putting off the old man, the flesh. That's why it says we don't even know Christ after the flesh because we're no longer in that tabernacle, you know? And so when it goes to, where are we at? Where is that? When we go here and um, here, Zechariah, <laughs> it talks about this. He says, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. He's talking about the flesh, right? What are those wounds in thine hands? He's talking about the flesh. But we don't know him after the flesh anymore because we've been crucified with Christ, right? And we're born again of the spirit. And it says, awake, O sport against thy shepherd. And it talks about that. And it says, come to pass that in that land, said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off. The part that's cut off is the flesh and blood, right? Because flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. The part that can go in is the spirit. Stephen, when a stone called upon God, so Lord Jesus received my spirit, right? And that's why it says, I'll bring a third part through the fire. Save me some of fear, pulled it from the fire, hating even the garment, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. The life of the flesh is in the blood, right? But the words that I speak to their spirit in their life, father of spirits, so into the spirit, you shall the spirit reap life everlasting. And I refine them because he's saying, I'm taking all those impurities, which is the flesh, and I'm burning that. And we'll try them as gold is tried because he tries the hearts, right? He tries the hearts. Do you believe? Do you have faith? And then he says, well, if you don't have faith, I tried your heart and your heart burned for the lust of this world. So you refuse to believe the gospel. So you're not born again. So you're none of his. My sheep, I know them. I give them. They believe I give unto them eternal life because they heard my voice and they believed it. They shall call upon my name, right? And I will hear them because they're his sheep. You know, once you're born again, you actually can call on God, the, our father. You know, like it says, call no man on earth your father. You have one heavenly father. I will say it is my people and they shall say, the Lord is my God, right? <clears throat> you know, to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. To the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. So why is he saying Zechariah 3, 6 is uh, not what it is? Listen to what he says. He's going to tell you that the Bible doesn't mean what it says, of course. Right. So the point was that Christians will quote that as a messianic prophecy, whereas, in fact, this is an idol worshiper who's being exposed so that it was actually Jesus being exposed, that Christians will quote that as a messianic prophecy, whereas, in fact, this is an idol worshiper. It is a messianic prophecy. This is talking about the man, Jesus, who died for our sins. Remember, it says he was made to be sin. He was made to be an idol who knew no idol, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. When it says he was made to be sin, let me show you this, because people, see, people don't seem to understand. <laughs> people don't seem to, They don't seem to believe that part. Made of a woman. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, Mary's flesh isn't, isn't sinful. See, that's why people worship Mary. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Where? In him. Right? In him. Look, there's no condemnation of those who are in him, in Christ, who walk not after the what? Flesh, but after the what? Spirit. Here's another thing. We see him spiritually, right? So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. What is he talking about? Bear the sins. That's the flesh, right? Curses any man that hangeth on the tree. You saw a you saw it was flesh. They pierced him, and out came what? Water and blood. A spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. Right? To the king eternally immortal, invisible, the only wise God. And unto them that look for him, what? Shall he appear? Listen, the second time. The first time someone comes to you and you see them as a man. You're looking at the outward appearance. And it's like, don't look at the outward appearance. God is a spirit, so you got to see it by faith. And so then you say, oh, 
I see you're coming to me and you're telling me this thing is this good news. And you're saying today, if you hear his voice and you say, yes, it's God, the work within me to do into will of his good pleasure. Right. And then you say it's the work of the spirit, not the work of the flesh. Right. The words that I speak to, there is spirit in their life. You're not born again by having sex. We're not. I'm not telling you to go into the house. Right? I'm telling you to believe the incorruptible word of God that liveth and abideth forever. You got to be born again by that word. And so he appeared a second time without sin unto salvation. What do you mean without sin? Oh, because God is manifest in the flesh, but justified in the spirit. Let me show you that. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. But look at this, guys. Justified in the spirit. <laughs> look at that. What are you talking about? What you mean? Well, let's just divide God in half. Let's say half of God is just, but the other half, no. Justified. He was made to be sin. Does it say, uh, well, who's made to be sin? The spirit? No. It says there's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the what? Flesh. There's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Justified in the spirit, right? Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels, ministering spirits. That's us. Priest unto the Gentiles. Those are unbelievers because it says to the Jew first. Right. You have to be converted. Right. You have to be born again, converted, regenerated before you can go and convert someone else. You have to believe the good news, the good, the good tidings. You have to believe the gospel and be converted yourself, Nicodemus. And then once you're born again, you can go and tell other people. In fact, listen, I think it says. Uh, um. I may have this wrong. Let me, man. Let's see. Um, let's see if I can find this. And what you hate when you know a verse and where you kind of, huh. uh, It's divided in two verses. That's why I can never get it. And the Lord said in the si said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you. You know, it's talked about um, saving some with fear, pulling them from the fire, hating you with the garment spotted by the flesh, that he may sift you as wheat, right? But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Meaning, I hope you believe. I hope you believe the truth. Listen. And when thou art converted, listen, he's talking, he's talking this, he's talking about Simon saying, when thou art converted, basically he's saying, you're not converted yet. But when you are converted, once you have the spirit, it's God that worketh in you to do it to will of his good pleasure. It's the self same spirit that worketh all in all. He says, then you can go and do what? Strengthen thy brother. But who's my brother? Is those that do the will of my father. Well, what's the will of him that sent me? That all who see from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. The son and believe, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Have what? Everlasting life, right? You sow into the spirit, you shall the spirit be life everlasting, right? Children of the flesh are not children of God. I mean, look at how gorgeous this is, guys. It's basically showing you that, this is telling you that Peter or Simon wasn't converted. And then he's basically saying, I hope you believe the right thing. I hope your, I hope your faith don't fail you. 
I hope you don't put no confidence in men. <laughs> right? That's what he's saying. And he says, and when thou art converted, once you get saved, then you can go and do what? Preach to the Gentiles. Because right now, you a Gentile yourself. You're a heathen yourself. So, but once you get converted, Nicodemus, once you believe, once you're uh, of the kingdom, then you can preach the gospel of the kingdom. Once you believe the gospel of the kingdom, you must first be born into the kingdom yourself. And then because you've been born, you have because of the you've been born. Now you have the right. Now you have the the the, the charge to go and tell others, hey, the kingdom of God is at hand. Right. The kingdom of God is at hand. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's what you're doing. So he's saying you can strengthen your brethren once you have eternal life. Once you, it says the God is my strength, right? Doesn't it? Don't it say somewhere? Don't it say somewhere, guys? God is my strength. It's God that worketh in you to do unto the will of his good pleasure. But don't, don't it say somewhere? I said, you know, God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. <laughs> perfect. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hind feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. To the chief singer of my stringed instruments, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Right? Today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Think about how beautiful <laughs> it's beautiful. It's like, look, manifest in the flesh. Well, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling. You know, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not of his. Justified in the spirit. So God is the spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and truth. Scene of ministering spirits. Those of us who believe now we're here to minister the gospel to other people because we're going to preach it to the who? The Gentiles, to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. Believed on. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Received up in Stephen when his stone called upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. No flesh of glory before him. Flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God doesn't dwell in the temples made with hands and easy worship with men's hands. Guys, it's, it's, it is utterly amazing. And then, of course, when you get to this guy, what's he going to say? What's he going to say? Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friend. Right. So the point was that Christians will quote that as a messianic prophecy, whereas, in fact, this is an idol worshiper who's being exposed so that it was actually Jesus being exposed as being idolatrous or something like that. That was the argument. Um, I don't I think what he was trying to say is that he was explaining that the wounds of the Messiah, like in Isaiah 53, weren't actually from a cross that he that the wounds that the Messiah would have received in Isaiah 53 was actually uh, received in his friend's house. And I was just wondering, like, what that meant. Yeah, First Zechariah 13. What it's saying is it's saying that, you know, it's the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit is truth. It's saying I conferred. Listen. To reveal his son in me that I preached him amongst the heathen immediately I conferred not with what water and blood and guys guys just to show you how amazing God's word is I conferred not with water and blood look at this we can go back to this we can go back to this because remember this is talking about the spiritual house right remember this it says um That is he that came by water and blood, right? I confer not with flesh and blood. I confer not with flesh and blood. It says, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. It says, yeah, Jesus Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. But is it, but is it the flesh and the blood that 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 uh, that is the truth? It says, no, it is the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. So I conferred not with water and blood. I conferred not with the water and blood. I conferred not with the man, Jesus Christ, but with the spirit. The words that I speak to their spirit in their life. I am the way, the truth, the life. Right? The words that I speak to their spirit in their life. I mean, how, how amazing is that, guys? Listen. And that verse is not a messianic prophecy. It's not a prophecy about Jesus okay. being the Messiah. It's a prophecy about some. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 
Because the man, Jesus, died for all men. So if he died for all men, how come all men aren't saved? Because if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. We all, everybody can say they're of the flesh of Jesus. Every, every man can say they're of the flesh of Jesus. The same flesh that Mary got is the same flesh that came from Adam and Eve, which was formed from the dust of the earth. Adam was formed from the dust. God took a rib from Adam. He made what? Mary out of the rib of Adam. And Adam said to Mary, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Adam sowed a seed into his wife, Mary. But again, they had sinned and corrupted themselves before they had the first child. And then it says, if you sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. So they corrupted themselves in the whole world. All the world is corrupt and sits in darkness. And hence, my kingdom is not of this world and the children of the flesh cannot please me. Corruption cannot inherit in corruption. Hence, you must be born again, Nicodemus. It doesn't matter if you go back into your mother's womb because the children of the flesh aren't children of God. Avoid foolish questions and strivings about the law and genealogy. They're unprofitable in vain. Someone being exposed for idol worship. That's number one. Uh, number two. Okay. Right. Number two. Christians often misquote it as if it's a messianic prophecy, but it's not. Number two, the Hebrew ben yadayim there does, does not mean in the hands. It means between the arms, so in the back. That's why some Jewish translations and others will translate it, what, what are these wounds on your back? Uh, so when he says some Jewish translations, what, you mean some translations of people who say they're Jews and are not? You mean the heathens? Are you talking about the same ones that Jesus says, you're of your father, the devil, and the works of your father do is a murder from the beginning of both, not a truth? Surely, if Jesus is saying, you're of your father, the devil, that kind of defeats the whole foolish genealogy thing. I mean, if he says, you're of your father, the devil, and he says, I know you're Abraham's seed. Yeah, the corruptible seed of the flesh. All men are of Abraham's seed according to the flesh. You're being dumb. You're being foolish. All men came from Adam and Eve. Jacob and Esau were twin brothers, so it's not about the flesh. <laughs> it's about being born again of incorruptible seed. If you sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. If you sow into the spirit, remember, a spirit hath not flesh and bones, and the spirit doesn't have flesh, and the life of the flesh is in the blood, then the spirit doesn't need blood because the spirit doesn't have flesh. And it's the spirit that bears witness, the spirit is true, it's the spirit that quickens the give of life. Excuse me. I'm talking about eternal life, not, not flesh. Flesh is seen, flesh is mortal. To the king, eternally mortal, invisible, the only wise God. So, God is saying these things very clear. And he's basically explaining to us that, look, you must be born again. God's a spirit. He's the father of spirits. Children of the flesh aren't children of God. Flesh and blood cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. And so, that's what he's saying. He's saying, look, the... the what you guys contributed when it says he was made to be sin, he's saying, yeah, that's the flesh of Mary. That's the flesh of man. That's why he's called the son of man. And that's why when you look at the cross, curses anyone that hangeth on a tree, you're supposed to see the crown of thorns. <laughs> and you're supposed to say, does a man gather grapes of thorns and figs of thistles? And he's saying, this is what happens to your kingdom. Because, you know, typically you pass your kingdom down to your son, right? The son of man. And he said, look, he's wearing the crown of thorns. That's why those who say they're Jews and are not got so offended when he had that sign above his head. And they're like, remove that sign because they wanted the kingdom. And he's like, no, my kingdom's not of this world. And that's why they're like, oh, we'll kill him. Because if we don't kill him, then people are going to believe. And then they're going to take away our seat in our, in our, in our nation. So kill him. We, our treasure is in this world. Our hearts are for the treasures in this world. Until this day, you have the three so-called Abrahamic faiths, the fake and phony faiths, the, 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 the heretical doctrines of devils claiming that they're godly. And it doesn't say no three Abrahamic faiths in the Bible. It says one Lord, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into one body. So we're baptized by one spirit into one body. And it says, you sow into the spirit. So the body is a spiritual body. It's a spiritual tabernacle, a spiritual tent, a spiritual household, right? So it's not a temple made with hands, right? That's what these guys are faking. They're, oh, if you go to the dome of the rock and see the prophecy was 
that the stones, he's, Jesus said, not one stone will be left upon another. And they're trying to convince you <laughs> that that's the only thing that's stopping Jesus. See that, that he can't be, he can't rebuild the third temple, right? Because the other one was destroyed in 70 AD. That's what they're trying to tell you. And in, I'm telling you, the Bible is saying, well, the temple is talking about the temple, which is of the flesh, but it's telling you, look, the temple was the, te the first temple is the temple was that temple of what? Adam. And it says, and Adam all died. And he says, that's already condemned. That temple, he says, everybody who's in Adam are considered to be dead. That's why Jesus said to the man, he says, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Because he said, you need to follow me in the regeneration. Meaning you got to be born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God to live in the body forever. Not the temple made with hands that perishes. All flesh will perish and go back to the dust. So he's saying, look, today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. You need to be in a temple made without hands. You need to be a stone in the temple built upon the foundation by faith, which is Christ, the spiritual rock. And then uh, he's saying that first temple, that first man must get out of the way. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, right? He's a new temple, right? Old temples are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So he's explaining that um, when you're born again, you're in that temple made without hands. And so what Jesus was saying, he says, he was saying, when he's talking about the stones, he said, and shall lay thee even with the ground. Listen, and thy children, this is like saying this to all of Adam, all the descendants of Adam. <laughs> born of the children of the flesh. He's saying, I know your heart's desire to have more children, right? I know your heart's desire is to sow into the flesh, but you sow into the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he says, all the fruit of the womb that's on your tree will wither and fall away, will perish and go back to the dust. And he says, and I will lay thee even with the ground. You will build, you know, your family tree, you'll think it's flourishing, but he's saying, excuse me, He's saying you will see those, 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 your, your lineage, your prodigy. It will, what? It will lay even with the ground. It will go back to the dust and thy children within thee. He's basically saying everything that's within you is going to go back to the dust. Your children within thee, they shall not leave in thee. He's telling you, you're building a temple. He's saying your foundation is not a sure foundation. It's built on sand. He's saying, look, the lies, you know, the, the, the waters, the waves are going to crash against it. And it's going to be great. It's going to be the fall of that house because it's not built upon the rock. It's built on what? The lies of men, the words of men. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Beware of the doctrines of the Pharisees. Beware of these people who are trying to glory in their flesh. Beware of people say, I'm a chosen race. Beware of the three Abrahamic face lie. Beware of people who are trying to tell you, oh, you know, the prophecies being fulfilled in the Middle East and in 1948 and God has a chosen race. Beware. Beware. My kingdom is not of this world. You can't even see it. You can't even enter it. You have to be born into it. And you have to success from faith to faith. That's like saying, you're not going to see it. You're going to have to just believe it. And that's it. And he says, and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee. Listen, because he's saying you guys are going to destroy one another. And they, all these people who lie to you, who give you these false gifts through their lies, trying to teach works. Who give you a false gospel. He said they shall not leave in thee. One stone upon another. He said like that lie destroyed men. Right. He's a, he's a liar and the father of it. All men are liars. He says because thou knew not the time. Today if you hear his voice. Harden not your heart. Lo I stand at the door and knock. Right. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. As many as received him. You knew not the time of your visitation because when my saints came to you and you were busy listening, looking at the outward appearance, thinking that you were a chosen race and you said, I'm not going to receive you. You're just a, a Gentile, a goy or whatever you want to call them. 
a pagan, a heathen, and you're like, we're the we're the chosen apple of God's eye. You didn't even listen to them. You didn't believe a word they said. You hardened your heart towards the truth because you thought God's a respected person because you believe your father, the devil, and the works of your father, you will do. He was a murderer in the beginning and abode not in the I am the way, the truth, the life. That's what's going to happen to a lot of people because they're just not going to believe. They refuse to believe. Just like this guy, the witch Dr. Brown. This witch doctor, Dr. Witch Brown, who went to the higher institutes of higher heresy, he's trying to convince you that, oh, the word is not true because he's trying to save his flesh and whom he cherishes. He's trying to show his loyalty to the Middle East. That's where his heart is. That's where his treasure is. And so he's perverting the truth. He doesn't believe it's by grace through faith. He doesn't believe... You, you need to be converted. He's trying to get people to believe in the three Abrahamic faiths. <laughs> he's trying. He, says, he doesn't believe in one Lord, one faith. He's oh yeah, I'm, he's trying to keep his his corrupt seed, and he's trying to mix the corrupt seed with the incorruptible seed, right? You sow into the flesh, you sow the flesh with corruption. He's like, oh, let's mix the flesh with the spirit. It said no, 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 no. Bible says, no, you cannot do that. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. God is a spirit, and they that worship it must worship him in the spirit and truth. And the spirit against the flesh. So what do you think that means, guys, for the man Jesus? <laughs> you think you think God's relishing in the flesh? You think God is divided against himself? The flesh lusts against the spirit? Well, who's an antichrist? But he that denied that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. But wait a minute. It says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So maybe you better not look at the outward appearance. Maybe you got to look at that cross and notice that it said the son of man and understand what that means. Maybe you got to understand that he's saying, look, it's the son of man. He's wearing a crown of thorns and he's been pierced, bruised, beaten, put to death, crucified, cursed on a tree. And what kind of tree was that? Was that, was that an incorruptible tree? The one of the flesh? Or is, is that a tree that showed you that it perished? And God said, look, even though it perished and even though it's not my seed, I can raise it from the dead to put the devil to an open chain. But don't get it twisted. Children of the flesh are not children of God. Don't pervert my word. He's saying the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And look, these are contrary the one to the other. Oh, brother, brother, brother. I'm going to accuse you of Gnosticism now. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to accuse you of Gnosticism. Well, okay. Accuse, uh, where are thine accusers? Accuse away. I'm telling you guys, the spirit and they that worship must worship in the spirit and truth. I don't have time to study all your heresies, all your versions of Gnosticism, all your versions of unbiblical terms and theologies, your 50 cent words. It says these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. So explain to God why that's wrong. <laughs> explain to God how that's wrong. Okay. No one's denying that he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. No one's denying. It says it. For what the law could not do, that it was weak. Where? Weak through the, what, what was the power of God? And, oh, the spirit. It's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. It's the spirit that quickeneth, giveth life. The flesh profited nothing. It was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son, the first fruits, in the, look, in the likeness of sinful flesh. Oh, that's why he says I must put off this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus has shown us. Saving some with fear, pulling from the fire, hating the garment spotted by the flesh. In the likeness of sinful flesh. And listen, and for sin, condemn sin in the what? In the flesh. Wait a minute. Condemn sin in the flesh. Wait a minute. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Know we no man after the flesh. Though we've known Christ after the flesh, now henceforth know we him no more. The children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. God has explained this to us so many ways. And let me show you something else. Listen to this. This is highly problematic. This isn't just a little problem. <laughs> this is just a little problematic. Listen. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, the life, right? It says, the men are led by the Spirit of God. These are the sons of God, right? He says, so to the Spirit, show the Spirit, reap life everlasting. He says, all men are liars, right? Listen, even the Spirit of truth, wait a minute. Even the Spirit of truth, wait, where's, the, where's, the, where's the flesh of truth? Oh, it's not there, all right. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the what? World cannot receive. Oh, man, I guess... When you're born again, you're born again from Jerusalem above as free as the mother of us all. I guess you got to seek a better country in heavenly. Listen, listen, remember, to the king, eternal, invisible, to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Listen, excuse me. The, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, listen, because it seeth him not. But wait a minute. People saw Jesus. Remember when Jesus said to um, Philip, he says, Philip, have I been so long with you and thou has not known me? If you've seen me, you've seen the father. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. He said, Philip is talking to Jesus and Jesus is right there. Let me let me show you to you. Let me show, let me show you. Jesus said and said unto him, have I been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me? Listen, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Right. Listen, hast thou not known me? Right. Hast thou not known me? Philip, is he talking about the flesh? He that have seen me. Listen have seen the Father, right? Listen, he that has seen me has seen the Father. What are you talking about? And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? He's telling him, you better see it by faith. To the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Look, here's the thing. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him. He's the head, the savior of the body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all be baptized by one spirit into one body, many members, one body. He's the head, the savior of the body being found in him, right? Many members, one body, right? Having not my own life, And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are things are all things and we by him. So it's telling us <laughs> there is but one God, the father, but it's saying, look, is God the work of in us? We're in him. We're in the body, but it says, look, our father is with us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. So it's not like there's many gods. It's just many of us. And he's in all of us. Is God the work of in you to do into will of his good pleasure? Well, how many people are in that body? says many members but how many gods are there there's but one god right is god the work within you to do into will of what his being found in him his good pleasure god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive as many as receive him gave him power to become the son of god 
because it seeth him not, to the king eternal and invisible, the only wise God, neither knoweth him, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. My sheep, I know them, I give it to them eternal life, they shall never perish, none shall pluck them from my hand. But ye know him, for he dwelleth in you. He dwelleth in you, is God that worketh in you to do unto the will of his good pleasure. Is the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit of truth, and shall be what? In you. Right? So guys, when you get people like this just lying, it's because he's trying to keep his little false lying worldly kingdom. And he can have it, guys, because we, he can have it. He says you can do nothing against the truth, right? This world of darkness, it'll all perish. It's temporal. It will fade. It will all, this, all this stuff that you see, vanity of vanities, it's all going to go away, guys. This is the, the world that they're fighting for. It's the same world that's going to swallow them up. The grave is going to swallow up all the children of the flesh. So they can keep fighting. It's, it's foolish. It's, it's, it doesn't mean in the hands, okay? It means you got dying there can be hand or arm. It's between. So what's between your arms? It's shoulders back. So that's that's what it's talking about. So it's, it's unrelated to that. Uh, so, uh, so very easy right. to refute that. Now the the prophecy or the, the psalm taken on by the Messiah. He says it's very easy to refute that. Those... <laughs> The wounds in the house of my friends. He said, "Look, what are those? These wounds in thine hands?" He's like, "Oh, that, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that because we gotta save the flesh because you know we say we're of Jesus's flesh and that's our whole thing for this false Trinity thing and this is how we're combining through the hypostatic union. We're trying to make God flesh and spirit, even though the Bible says the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. That would mean God is divided against Himself." That's utterly stupid. And then it says he was made to be sin and curses any man to hang on the tree. I don't think God's cursed. I'm pretty sure God wasn't made to be sin. I'm pretty sure that's the flesh that came from Mary that came from Adam and Eve, right? That's the same flesh of all of us. That's why we're no longer in the flesh. We're, we're, the, we're the children of God, and he's called the father of spirits. Each produce after his kind. By uh, Psalm 22, that description there really fits well for crucifixion. And everything spoken of in Isaiah 53 really speaks well of crucifixion. It doesn't have to mean crucifixion, really speaks well of that. And then lastly, the, the argument in the house of your friends, the Messiah is is rejected in the house of his friends, his own people, you know? And yeah, his own people. That's the children of the flesh. You're right. He's rejected in the house of his friends. Exactly. All the children of the flesh. Right? When you say his own people, exactly. That the mediator, <laughs> that's why it says know we no man after the flesh though we known Christ after the flesh now henceforth know we him no more now here's the, here's the, here's the thing if that's the case given that you're trying to say hypostatic union is true that God is both flesh and spirit not you no know, God comes in the likeness of sinful flesh but God's spirit and they that we must worship in the spirit and truth then how can you have the verse that says many will come to me in that day saying Lord Lord have I not done all these wonderful works in your name etc and they say depart from me you work of iniquity I never knew you how can he say, I never knew you, if it says, well, we knew him after the flesh, now henceforth know him no more? Well, apparently, he'll say, I never knew you, because he's talking about people who have eternal life. That's why it says, my sheep, I know them, I give it to them eternal life. He can say, yeah, according to the flesh, you guys are all my brothers and sisters according, and sisters according to the flesh, right? But he says, no, but let me explain to you who the real children of God are. The children of the flesh are not children of God, so I don't know you if you don't have eternal life. My sheep, they have eternal life. You got to be regenerated. You got to be born again. This guy is such a heretic. <laughs> he really does hate God, guys. This is what's the thing. You let these guys, they laugh and they, they seem so jovial and they seem so sincere. But again, that's just the way of the world, man. People will laugh and try to be charming and they hate God. They hate it. And they're trying to be a respected person. That's why everyone wants to elevate. That's why the Catholic Church carries the so-called cross around, right? Because they relish in death. That's what they do. They they elevate death. They worship death. It's a death cult. And that's what they're trying to offer. That's the only thing they're offering. They're offering death. They don't have the words of life. The words that speak to their spirit and life. These guys are meant to you. They said, we're still waiting on the Messiah. Okay, well, how are you giving how are you giving the gospel to anybody? How are you a light to the nations if you don't have the light? If you don't have God as light and in him there's no darkness. And how are you a light to the nation and you're just saying, well, he's not even here. They're trying to convince you that God's not here because they were trying to say, well, don't we don't want you to understand that God can come in the likeness of your sinful flesh. Right. They don't want you to think that God can see because think about it. If I came to you and gave you the gospel and you saw me, 
And I was like, I'm going to give you the gospel. And I said, if you believe this, you get eternal life. Who gave you, who gives you eternal life? It's not me. It's God the work within me to do it the will of his good pleasure. Today, if you hear his voice, but they don't want you to think that Jesus could come in the likeness of your sinful flesh. They're telling you Jesus can only come in the likeness of their little mirage that they made up called some Middle Eastern category. And they're trying to claim that's a chosen race. And why do you think they want to make it a chosen race? Because instead of it being seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Jerusalem above is freedom of us all. They're saying, no, God has a chosen race that's above all people that dwell upon the face of the earth. <laughs> Not that we're chosen of God and we're in heavenly places above, meaning Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. We're above. Our kingdom is not of this world. And they're thinking, no, no, no. Our kingdom is of this world and we're going to, we're just a chosen race above, you know, amongst the children of the flesh, who, by the way, aren't even the children of God and can't please God. We're the apple of his eye that are a race above all races that dwell upon the face of the earth. And that's what they're trying to get you to do. And of course, they're coordinating that with the three Abrahamic false religions to get you to believe it. And I'm just telling you, look, I'm not trying to get you into politics. I'm simply telling you, look, don't forsake the free gift of eternal life by believing these liars, guys. Know that you're a sinner and you've fallen short and you cannot work or be justified in your flesh. Knowing that you, like every single person, has sinned against God and understand that you're not going to be justified by the law. Hence, that's why Jesus, the mediator between God and man, paid your legal sin debt with his blood. And now that that's done, God's saying there's only one thing you need to do. What must I do to say? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, if you believe that, you're understanding that God, who's the spirit, will give you the promise that he cannot lie. He gives you eternal life. And he says, you'll never perish. None will snatch him from his hand because he has the power of death. And he proved that when he quickened that mortal body of the man, Christ Jesus. And he's saying, look, children of the flesh aren't children of God, but I'm letting you know I got the power over death. And if you believe the gospel, you have eternal life and your righteousness is not your own. You're found in me having not your own righteousness, meaning God is your righteousness. God is your perfection. God is your justification. God is your holiness. So he says, when you believe, don't look at your flesh because you're dead to the flesh, right? You're dead to the old man. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new and your new man is hid in the body. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. God be baptized by one Spirit in the one body is sown in natural bodies, raised a spiritual body. You're in the temple of God, in the household, that spiritual household of God. You're a stone in the temple, right? Built upon the foundation, right? And he's saying, your life is hid in God. And so if anybody tries to accuse you, God's saying, look, <laughs> they're accusing me. And that's why it's like, where, where are thine accusers? You're no longer even of the flesh, right? You're a new creature and you're in a heavenly kingdom. It's an eternal kingdom. And all your accusers are going to perish. <laughs> all, don't worry about it. All your accusers are going to perish. Just like your old flesh man is going to perish. And it, it will never go to... to it, the, the flesh will never. It's gone. It's done. The flesh. That's it for the flesh. Children of the flesh aren't children of God. So they, they don't want you to understand that, um, that the spiritual children are, are eternal. And they're way superior than, than the temporal flesh. That, that they, these guys relish in the flesh. They're relishing the clay and the temporal things that, that fade away. Right? They relish in the things that they can see. Uh, this is right. It says, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Look, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, meaning we see it by faith because we're, we're looking at things that are not seen, right? It's faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. That's everything you can see, guys. <laughs> everything, including when you go and look up into the sky. Things which you can see are temporal. If you can even see it under a microscope, it's temporal, right? But the things which are not seen are eternal. So you know God's eternal, Right. That's why he said to Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Things which are not seen are eternal. God's eternal. His kingdom's eternal. And his sheep have what? Eternal life. So that tells you children of the flesh aren't children of God. His kingdom is not of this world. It's not in the Middle East. He doesn't have a chosen race, which you can see. That's a lie. 
and God's not flesh hypostatic union is a lie clearly because you could people saw the man Jesus they plucked his beard they, they had to see him right so that, <laughs> this second Corinthians 418 exposes so much but people just again these pastors don't like to some reason these pastors be avoiding they be playing hopscotch with the Bible y'all they be hopscotching around the scriptures we hopscotching boy. And then remember, I just showed you the spirit of truth, which the world cannot receive. <laughs> right? They like they don't they don't like that verse either. There's so many verses they don't like to show you. They're like, and then Colossians three, you're dead, your life is hid with Christ in God. Ooh, they can't. It's hard to teach works if they say your life is hidden. You're like, well, my life is hidden in God, and God is perfect. So I, if God's my righteousness, I'm found in Him, having not my own righteousness. I'm good, <laughs> right? I'm good, but they don't like that, guys. Okay. Let's see what finish. See what lie he's going to tell. To finish this off, and and does suffer yeah. at the hands of his friends who give him over. But Zechariah thirteen is sometimes quoted as a messianic prophecy. When you look at the context, it it really doesn't work. And and then as I said, uh, in, in fact, let me just let me just look here in uh, Zechariah thirteen six, and look at let's see the new Jewish Publication Society version. Um, yeah, it translates, what are those sores on your back? The new Jewish. <laughs> oh, man, this guy. This guy. I mean, it is amazing. He claims, this guy claims to be a Christian, right? A member in the body, right? And God is the head, the savior of the body. But he says Jesus isn't here. He's still waiting for the return. But he's in, but he's supposed to be in the body of Christ. It's supposed to be Christ in him, the hope of glory. But he's waiting. Then you think that, well, if it's Christ in you, since you seek a proof of Christ being in you, mean, since Jesus says I'm the way, the truth. So if you have the truth in you, wouldn't Jesus be able to tell you what, what it means? Shouldn't you? The, the, the discerning spiritual things with spiritual things, right? It talks about the natural man receiving not the things of the spirit of God, right? So you think that the truth... God would tell him what it means, but he's going to defer guys to what? Some unbelieving pagan devil, devils, right? It's what are those sores on you? What did he say? <laughs> what did he say? In fact, let me just, let me just look here in uh, Zechariah 13, 6 and look at, let's see, the new Jewish publication society version. New Jewish the new, new Jewish I mean I can't believe this stuff the new Jewish no let's see I'm sorry What's this? Let's see what this is all about, guys. This is crazy. The New Jewish Publication Society version. First published in the complete 1985 the modern Jewish writing of scraps, translation, Masoretic text, and Hebrew, Bible, English, blah, blah, whatever. This is a five magnet, whatever. Who's on this thing? This translation emerged from the collaboration efforts of interdenominational team of Jewish scholars and rabbis working together over a 30-year period. <laughs> right. Right. You're crazy if you listen to anything these guys tell you. You are crazy. These guys, I mean, look, look, look what they say. They say this is the effort of Jewish scholars and rabbis. Oh, we're going to get a, you know, they really going to tell you there's not a chosen race, right? <laughs> same people who invented they, those are the same people who invented the what um, rabbis are going to be the same people who invented what the curse of ham <laughs> you know they're the same people from the from the uh, creators of the curse of ham comes the new Jewish publication society to tell you that you better believe in the chosen race yeah you know there's no deceit there they, they, they call themselves look, wait let me show you something <laughs> Wait a minute. Here. Um, 
Um, let's see. Be but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and ye are all brethren. They don't want to believe that. They're like, no, no, we our role is to be higher. We are chosen race above all the races that dwell upon the face of the earth, based on our new modern translations. Forget that chosen generation being those who's regenerated. No, he's a chosen race of all ra guys. Again, I'm not telling you. Look, all I'm saying is, look, believe the gospel. If you believe it, you're born again. Um, you're a new creature created in Christ. You have eternal life. Remember, it says that you can do nothing against the truth. So once you have eternal life, no one can take away your eternal life. Right. So this is why whatever they do, they're going to do. These guys are doing it, And that's the beauty of it. You believe the gospel. See, when the Bible talks about this, it says today, if you hear it, look, it says It's telling you not to provoke God. It says, look, while it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart. <laughs> right? It's telling you not to harden your heart. Because David, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all these people believe the gospel. It's saying, look, each person needs to believe. The gospel was preached unto them as well as unto us, but it didn't profit them being not mixed with faith in them that heard. It says, enter my rest. He said, look, enter my rest. The Sabbath was made for men and not men for the Sabbath. He's saying, look, when you believe, you're, you're understanding that you can't do any works. That's why you're entering his what? Rest. You rested from your works because you died to the flesh. And now you're like, it's God that worketh in me. Not me. It's God that worketh in me. I'm resting. It's God that worketh in me to do into his good, good pleasure. Listen, again, he limited a certain day saying in David. Who, who is this saying in David? Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Who is saying this in David? Who is this saying in David? Oh, yeah, here you go. Again, listen, it's Christ speaking in me, right? You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not in him. So wait a minute. Did David have the spirit of Christ? Meaning he wasn't in the flesh, but in the spirit because he had the spirit of Christ dwelling in him. Again, he limits a certain day saying in David, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. Listen, today. After so long a time, it has said, today, if you will hear his voice, listen, harden not your heart. What must I do to be saved? You stiff neck and uncircumcised with heart. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. We are the circumcision, worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ, and have no confidence in the flesh. Listen, for if Jesus had given, who is this? If Jesus, so who was speaking in David? Who was saying in David? Jesus. If Jesus had given them rest, then he would not have afterwards spoke of another day. He said, look. Today, if you hear his voice, harden at your heart. He's saying, look, you're not in my Sabbath. You're not in my rest until you believe you're not in my rest. So he said, look, saying in David today, after so long a time, as it said today, if you hear his voice, harden at your heart. Right. Jesus says, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Right. If Jesus had given them rest, you know, they don't like that. Y'all, this sounds like another case for. It sounds like another case for some, um, this sounds like another case for the, what's it called? The, the, uh, new Jewish publication, <laughs> new Jewish publication society. Listen, it says for if Jesus had given them rest. Well, guys, you know, of course they don't like that. Let's just change that to Joshua. Oh, we got another translation problem, guys. No, we can't have Jesus and David. We got to erase that y'all. Just take that Jesus out. They be taking Jesus out every. Look at that. Because they got to teach you the three Abrahamic faiths, right? <laughs> they got to teach you those three Abrahamic faiths, those lies. One Lord, one faith. We all been baptized by one spirit into what? One body. And you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not his. All right, I'm going to let it go at that. Praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords. Amen.